Teal and Daisy Osborne called me and said he'd like to have Sharon and I meet them at Casa Bonita and meet an African man, Bensonita Hosa. We ate lunch together. He shared his story. And a young man, 17 years old, who had never worn a pair of shoes. And then God touched his life, brought him to America. He came to Christ for the Nations for a season, then went back to Benin City, which had been the witchcraft capital of the world. And he declared that was going to change. And God raised up a mighty ministry that has touched the nations of the earth. And Benson preached in over a hundred nations. God used that African man to shake his continent. Brother Osborne realized he was the leading person in Africa. And today, a great university, they sent their son, Feb, and he was a graduate of Victor Christian School, our homecoming king. And today, he's the president of their university now. Benin earned his doctorate at George Washington University. And in 1986, Benson invited me to come and preach for a crusade in Abiokuta. I didn't know the story. The country was about half Muslim, half Christian. The president at that time was a military dictator, and he, had, he was a Muslim. He lived in a Muslim area. And he went on television and announced, Nigeria is now a Muslim nation. Well, like everybody's going to have to be a Muslim. Well, Benson went on television, which he was on, you know, daily all over the day. He went on and said, I cancel the president's statement. That, that's the power Benson had. And he said, we are not a Muslim nation. We are free for you to be whatever you want to be. Uh, you know, he'd like for everybody to be Christians, but he was stating the truth that it was a free country, people are free. And then he scheduled a crusade in the president's hometown. And then he invited me to come and preach and did not tell me the situation. I remember the first night we were driving to the crusade grounds and there were lines of military trucks with soldiers and full combat gear and machine guns and I thought, my, that is strange. I said, Benson, what are, what are all these trucks and soldiers? He said, no problem. We get to the crusade grounds and we're there early and all these trucks are rolling up and these soldiers are jumping out and they're lining the field with machine guns. They've got half tracks and they're aimed at the stage. I said, what's going on? He said, security. So I thought, man, we really got security here. <laughs> well, and it really was. He intimidated the president and uh, the president knew he could not have a conflict in that area and he did send those soldiers to make sure nothing would happen we had total absolute freedom there was a, a lady who had been in a car accident in Lagos which is 50 60 miles south her son had literally carried her she they didn't have medical ability didn't have money for hospitals and so her bones sat crooked and she was a mangled mess. All of her limbs were all twisted up, how she had been hit, and they had no deal to set. And they, they brought her to the crusade and camped underneath the platform. It's never been an African crusade. It's, it's an experience. Wooden platform, big sticks and, and wooden boards and up about 10 or 12 feet high. Well, they camped under there each night. They'd go to the market and buy something to eat and cook with a charcoal fire. And one night, this woman was miraculously healed. The next day, she came walking on the stage, complete, every limb straight. Her, her son was just, uh, they were screaming. There was water baptism service, and she was telling her story. And this is what she said. Last night, I was a Muslim, but today, I am a Christian. Let's welcome the First Lady of Benin City. And her Faith International Outreaches, Margaret Ida Hosa.
the woman of God. And she's a fireball. She used to be very shy, but she has been delivered and set free. She is preaching all over. She took up the mantle that, uh, that was on her husband. Now, let me hear it from all the Africans that are here. I need that little high sound. Let's shout to the Lord with them. Praise the Lord. It's a joy for me to be here again. I come here as my home. When I'm in Tulsa, victory is my home. You may be seated. Thank you very, very much. God is a good God. And uh, we are glad to be his own. He has never failed he will not fail. Amen. Amen. I want to give honor to whom honor is due. I want to speak to the pastors of this house. I want to express my thanks to them again and again and again and again. I cannot be able, I will not be able to express all the thanks in one day. But one thing I know is that God knows my heart that I am indeed very, very grateful to both of you and to the, the, the congregation as a whole. Because when my husband went to be with the Lord, I, I was devastated. I didn't know what to do, and I started crying and mourning. But in the midst of that, God raised me up and set me into position. So I had no time to mourn. I had no time to mourn the man that we were together all of my life because we knew ourselves eight years before we got married. And uh, I spent most of my life with him together. And uh, all of a sudden he was taken away. I didn't know what to do. But when God set me into position, I was crying and I said, God, you know, I'm an African woman and I live in a man's world, quote unquote, and uh, this has never been before. And I was crying and I was t talking to God, you know, God is not moved by tears. It's not moved by tears, but God is moved by faith. And I was crying and praying and I knew God didn't hear me at that time, but you know, one of these days, I was in the, in the bathroom, and I was just showering, cleaning my body when I came out, and God spoke to me and said, Margaret, I am not gender-specific. Spe I am not gender-specific. You say you are a woman, you are an African woman, but I don't see you like that. I say, okay, God, if you don't see me like that, I, I want to be where you want me to be. And I take the position that you have put me, and I see myself as your image and your likeness. And since then, God has not uh, failed. I have said that story to say this, that when my husband left, I saw faces, many, many faces. And after the funeral service and all that, and I saw faces too. But I want to say this, that the faces of our pastors here have been the same. They've, not, they've never changed. As a matter of fact, they've done more to the ministry at home than when my husband was here. And this, I hold you are, are in high esteem for what God is doing here. Our prayers are with you, and I know you are praying for me. God is doing some things at home, the things that I never dreamt of in my life. You know, when my husband left, uh, as I said before, I was devastated. But I believe that the saints started praying for me. And I want to know that, I want to uh, 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 say this, that in the middle of the night, I'm sleeping, I hear voices. 
saying, crying unto God, God lift her up to where she belongs. Raise her up. Bless her. I mean, give her the boldness. And since then, I have been on the move. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that you want to hear what God is doing in Nigeria since my husband left. My husband left seven years, this is eight years. Seven years are, are now complete that he left. This is the eighth year. And you know what eight stands for? It's new beginning. New beginning. Amen. So we are beginning afresh as if nothing happened before. Because I believe that when you release the past, the past that is over, the past that is your teacher, then you stand today that is your opportunity. And when you miss the opportunity, your future is blurred. And I said to myself, yes, yesterday was my teacher. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is over. Yesterday cannot exist tomorrow. I am alive today, which is my opportunity. And the opportunity that I have today is to make sure that I make every day count. I make every day God's day. I make every day to advance the kingdom of God on earth here. And that is what we are doing here. Seven years ago, my husband left. This is the eight years I said. He left us with 89 schools. But today, by the grace of God, seven years after, we have 108, 109 schools. Amen. So I believe that the vision that our Bishop Benson Dahosa left behind is not diminishing, but it is advancing. His vision leaves and the vision goes on. He left us with one faith mediplex, which is the hospital, because we believe in combining medicine and prayers together because we believe healing comes from him from above. Doctors heal, doctor treat, but God does the healing. So we believe in combining whatever can drive the enemy out of your life for you to be able to fulfill your destiny on earth and your assignment is what we stand for. And so he left us with one hospital, but today we are glad to tell you that we have four hospitals. Amen. Four. We have one in Abuja, we have one in New York, we have one in a few miles away from Benin City, and one is under construction, plus the one that he left behind for us. And I believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. 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 He left us with one Bible school, which uh, our pastors here have been helping to sponsor students from Muslim uh, cities. He's been, he's been on them, and we have been conducting crusades and bringing them to the south to be trained. Because I believe that the indig when the indigenous are trained and are, 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 are anointed by the power of the living God, they can go back in their own dialect to begin to witness to their own people. And this is what has been uh, happening here. I mean, you know, the Muslim here and the Muslim in Africa, they are different. They are not the same. The ones over there are very radical. They, they are very hostile, violent. And whatever will, 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 will just uh, ignite any problem, I mean, they are in there. Burning of churches, killing and destroying lives. And so we are training them. We have now established a Bible school in Joss. That, that was uh, just recent. So that those that are around the northern part will go there and be serviced. We have five Bible schools now. My husband left us with one. But we now have five Bible schools in different locations. Amen. We have three in Lagos, one in Joss, one in Portacot. And I believe that 
we are going to take over by the power of the living God. Amen. I, I, I also believe that when you and I are trained from the word of God, we have the boldness that anyone could ever have on earth here. I mean, that's what happened to me. When I was trained and by the power of God, when the Holy Spirit came upon me, I mean, there came a boldness that I do not even fear any threat from the enemy. Because I have him who energizes me, who strengthens me from the inside to the outside. This is what we are doing at home. Now, uh, we now have a leadership institute. This was not there when my husband was there. Because a lot of our pastors are in the villages. I believe that God has called us to the villages. I mean, you can invite anyone to come to a city from any part of the world. But what about the people that live in the interior, the people that live in the river Rhine that cannot even afford to come to town? They are images of God too, and they need to hear the gospel. And if we are to ask Jesus to come back, or if we are to say, God, you, we want you to come back, the gospel has to be preached to everyone. And that is where I am called. By the grace of God, I go on crusades. I don't sit at home and let, and, and let them carry uh, uh, the big rod after me and say, hey, behold, the bishop comes. And then I come in and I'm walking. As he, no, 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 no. I am an evangelist. I am called as an evangelist. I go to the River Rhine area, and I go to everywhere. I have been on River Niger, River Niger, to preach on a speedboat. Oh, yes. Be on the, on the river, go deliver people, set them free, preach, teach, and heal. And whenever we go, God honors his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We now have a full-fledged university. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was there when my husband was there, but it was not approved. It was not approved. But after two years, we saw, I summed up courage, and I said, this thing must be. He barely bettered it before he was called home. So this one must not die. And so we summed up courage, started writing all the programs that we, we, we have on ground. And two years later, the university has been approved. So we now have a full-fledged Christian university, two of a kind in Africa. Amen. Two of a kind in Africa. And God is the God that is able to do exceeding your imagination. Amen. Amen. We now have 2,500 students. And next year, we are building some buildings now to bring them in because I believe in keeping all in and instilling our own spirit into those children. Because if they are coming from outside, the enemy will infiltrate into them and they bring it into the school. But we are keeping them together, building dorms, dormitories, and hostels for them. And so that we can all be together, we can transfer our spirit into them, the spirit of the living God. Let them know that education without God is crisis. And we are educating them to go out into the world. And therefore, they have to believe what we believe. Believe whom we believe. Act the way we act. Talk the way we talk. So that when they go out there, they are known. They are known. They will not be infected with the poison that is out there. Amen? Amen. The university is going on strong, and I'm very, very happy that God is in that place. Amen? Amen. Amen. When my husband left, the thing I dreaded most was crusades. I was afraid to do crusades on my own. 
But everywhere I go, I'm driving on the street, I'm in the kitchen, I'm in my bedroom, I'm hearing crusade, crusade, crusade. And guess what? I tried it and it worked. <laughs> Glory! It worked. It worked. When I was going, I said, God, you told me that you are not gender specific. And I'm going now, and I want you to glorify your name. I want you to exhibit your glory. I want you to, to, to do something that you have never done before in my life. And guess what? We went to Dekina, and we had a crusade, and God came down. Amen. Amen. A Muslim was sleeping in his room. We were far away from him, and he was sleeping, and the Spirit of God woke him up and said, did you hear what the bishop is saying? He said, who, who is the bishop? I can't hear. He said, now get up, go and give them a land for, for, for church. And he said, I, I don't know them. I don't know where they are. God said to him, Follow the sound. Follow the sound of the microphone. And he got up hurriedly. He couldn't wait to put on a, a nice dress. He hurried to the crusade ground with his pajamas. <laughs> and he came and said, I said, well, I don't know you. I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what you have asked for, but these are the documents of my land for you. God asked me to give it to you. I said, I can do with that. Bring it. <laughs> and I had him to kneel down. I said, kneel down. I want to pray for you. He knelt down. We led him to Christ. And today he is a man of God. Amen. 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 You know, the, the, the depth of my connection with this ministry is crusade. So, this ministry here is and has a passion, a passion for soul, and that is what drives this ministry. Amen. And that is what drives us at home too. And I am glad to let you know that God is doing something fantastic all over the world. Amen. Amen. I started having crusade. I just finished one in Lagos before I came here. And I tell you, there were signs and wonders, miracles everywhere, salvation everywhere. And a church was uh, uh, started in Lagos, a new church has been started in Lagos, and I'm glad to know that God is with us. Amen? Amen. I say God is with us. Amen. We are building churches now everywhere. Before my husband left, we had our ministry centered in Nigeria, based in Benin City. But today, seven years after, we have a church in Italy, we have in Germany, we have in uh, in. in uh, in, uh, in England, two churches in England, we have in South Africa, we have in Angola, we have in Central Republic of Africa, we have in Malaysia, and we have in Japan. Amen. Amen. And by the end of September this year, I will be going to Japan for a crusade. And I know is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is done at home, he can do in Japan. Amen. Amen. I was in Japan two years ago, and I saw the grief in the people's heart. We were just the, the, the noisiest people in the bus or in the train. Everybody was quiet as if they are dead. And, and statistics says that... Um, Japan has 1% Christian and 99% they believe in their own gods, different gods. And I said, no. They said, you know, when you are crossing the zebra, the, the zebra crossing, you see the sea of heads crossing without God. And here I am in this country and I said, no, I will come back again. Amen. 
And by the grace of God in September, we are going there for a crusade. Please pray for us. Pray for us. Because when American goes there for crusade, they, 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 they go with money, they give their money, they, they share money to, to the pastors. I told them, hey, look, I don't have money to share to any pastor. I am coming here on my own with God. I have a passion for the people, and I want you to stand firm with me and begin to pray that God will provide. I don't have all the money that they are bringing, but I have a big God. Hallelujah. I have a big God. Amen. Hallelujah. We have our women's uh, center where we train, where we bring in on wed mothers, the battered women, the, 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 the women that have been abused, misused. We bring them into the center, train them with the word of God, clean them out with the word of God. That's one thing I believe. I believe in catching the fish before you clean it. That's my belief. You catch it. You don't. You don't take your hook to the river and say, "No, I want the, the green one, or I want the I want the yellow one, or the pink one." No, no, no. You you you, you put in your net. You catch as many. You bring them home. Then you sit down, begin to select them, and then you begin to clean them up. I believe in catching the fish before you clean it. Amen. Amen. So we are throwing our sickles. We are throwing our nets into the world, and whoever comes in will just clean them out with the word of God. And God is so good and kind. Amen. Amen. So this is what we do in our, in our restoration. We call that center Restoration Center. We have, we have children that their parents are no more. I don't call them orphanage. I call them my sister's place. You know, when you... When you when you ask a child, where do you live? I live in that orphanage. There is a psychological effect already. But when you ask a child, oh, where do you live? I live in my sister's place. They are happy. They are happy. Amen. So I call them my sister's place. We have them all in there. And by the grace of God, we are going to enlarge that center. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to include skill acquisition, where we can train them with whatever they want to learn. They want to learn how to, how to fix the hair. They want to learn how to sew. They want to learn how to cook. They, they want to learn how to use computer and be secretaries. They want to increase, improve their knowledge in education. We are there to train them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, as I'm saying it, some, some of you are saying, can this be true? That's why I want you all to come to Nigeria. <laughs> come and see. Come and see. You know, Jesus with his disciples, when he met the disciples, and the disciples said, uh, tell us who you are. Are you like John that has no home? Are you, are you like John? And Jesus said, come and see. So Jesus had a home. He had where he, 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 he was staying because he wouldn't have asked them to come and see. So I'm saying to you all, we have two big conventions every year, one in November and one in August. The August is for the women, and uh, in November is the big conference where the men, the women, the boys, the girls, the students, everybody, we all come together, and it's always wonderful. And that's why I'm, I'm inviting our pastors here. And as many as we come, Come and join us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to thank both of you for standing with me, standing for me, standing to do the, the thing that God has called us to. And before I go into the word of God, let me...